May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Whether you are online, uh, hitting the road or at home, or all of us gathered in the sanctuary, um, we are grateful um, each and every week for this time to gather together. Uh, two things happen. Uh, we are gathered in, into community to receive God's promise, and also within that, the Holy Spirit works for a call. And um, just know today, as you come with what you're experiencing in your family, in your community, in our nation, in our world, we bring our whole selves, our body, and our spirits and trust in how God's Spirit indeed does come to us, both to receive that promise and to be sent out into the world in that call. And I don't think Jesus is uh, leaving us gently today with some words uh, that come from the Gospel of Luke, and Pastor Kristen is going to dwell there today. And we will share in the sacrament to receive God's grace and trust in what God is doing in the world and what God has to say to us in this moment in time. So if you're visiting, uh, we are glad you're here. Um, I always say worship is the best way to get the feel, the vibe of who we are as a church, and we trust that will be true today. So we begin just right where we are in our humanness and ask God to come close as we confess and receive God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Love as God loves. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we sing together.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray together, Holy Jesus, you invite us to travel with you, sending and guiding us with love and challenge. May our hearts be willing, changed by the challenge that finds us, grateful for what is asked of our faith in you. Amen. Our gospel this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests 
but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead, pardon me, let the dead bury their own dead. But as you, for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. Well, by the looks of my social media feed, it appears that many of us are back to traveling this summer, perhaps taking those trips that were delayed by several years because of the pandemic. In a couple of weeks, my family and I are getting on an airplane together for the first time since 2015. I was scanning uh, websites recently for inspiration, and I ran across an article called 10 Signs You're Not Compatible with Your Travel Partner. Some of us with young families don't need signs to know that we are incompatible with our travel partners. (laughs) I'm sure you have stories of being on a trip with someone with whom you didn't travel well. Perhaps you had a difference in spending styles. Maybe you had different interests or desire for activity once you reached your destination. Some people can't sit still and want to see every museum and attraction, and some prefer a mix of touring and relaxing and lounging. Maybe your planning styles and need for structure were different. Schedule down to the minute versus go with the flow. I remember getting to the airport to board a plane to Africa with a good friend of mine. I was so proud of myself for getting through security 45 minutes before the flight. She was a nervous wreck at the gate where she had already been for two and a half hours. When I heard her page me over the airport loudspeaker, I was in the airport gift shop, casually picking out toenail polish. (laughs) True story. I guess you, you know what kind of traveler I am. Conflict, it seems, is a part of traveling and journeying together especially when one has a totally different conception of the purpose of a trip than one's travel partner. I wonder if the disciples, Jesus' travel buddies in our story today, would have called Jesus an incompatible travel partner. That doesn't sound like something one of your pastors should be wondering, but hear me out. Jesus sets out with his companions in Galilee, and he is dead set on his destination. We read that he has set his face to go to Jerusalem. He had a singular focus to his travel. And as inheritors of this story, this story of his ultimate rejection, death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, we know why he had to make it there. But what did his travel companions know at the time? At this point in Luke's gospel, he had foretold his death to his disciples, but they didn't understand what he meant. The purpose of their trip was concealed from them, and we read that they were even afraid to ask Jesus about it. So it's like they were leaving on a mission trip together, and the guy driving the van was the only one who knew where they were going and why. Next, Jesus sent a couple of his traveling partners on ahead of him, maybe to secure a hotel and a place to eat for the night. 
but he obviously had trouble reading maps because he sent them to Samaria where the people would be unfamiliar and the welcomes would be few. That villagers from Samaria would refuse to provide hospitality to Jewish pilgrims en route to Jerusalem could have been anticipated. So if one of the basic rules of trip planning is to set one's sights on a safe and hospitable place to be, Jesus fell short as a travel companion here as well. But Jesus' would-be followers were undeterred. They were undeterred. They were excited for the journey with Jesus wherever it was going to take them. And we hear glib proclamations like, I will follow you wherever you go, Jesus. I will follow you, Lord. That is, until Jesus set them straight on what the conditions of the trip were going to be like. Personal pleasure didn't appear to be on the itinerary. There were no five-star hotels or hostels or even soft pillows on which to lay one's head at night, Jesus tries to explain. There will be no time to say goodbye to your friends and family. And if you think you would like to ask for a few days off to grieve the loss of someone you love, you might as well just stay back. To be completely honest, I'm not sure I want to travel with the single-minded, pushy, and irritable Jesus of our text today. He appears to be asking me to give things up that I think are important for the sake of moving to places I don't know, places that make me uncomfortable. And I guess as a preacher, I could do my best in this situation to gloss over Jesus' impatience and focus instead on his more peaceful and loving characteristics but I think that would be a disservice to you because the cranky side of Jesus reminds us that we, when we sign up for a trip with him, when we fill, our reg, fill out our registration form and put down our deposit, we should know what we're getting into. We should expect to be challenged and confused along the way. He has a purpose and mission in mind for all of our going and moving, but we are not always on board. The good news is that we are all invited into the radical demands of discipleship. We are all invited to trust and to pray and to listen and to talk back. Are you sure we're making the right turn, Jesus? to pray and listen again and to move forward in faith, to be changed from the inside out. And maybe the gospel today gives us some clues. Maybe the gospel today reminds us that if what we think we are hearing from God makes us a little itchy, if it causes discomfort, if it seems impractical or unpopular, if it prompts the telling of truths, if it urges us to move forward without clinging to the status quo, well then, we might just be on the right track. So where will the demands of radical love in the name of Jesus take you? my friends, in your relationships, in your care of neighbor, in using your voice and your power on behalf of those who are vulnerable, what are you being asked to leave behind? And where will the demands of radical love take Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth? It's tempting to move out of the pandemic and to use as our planning guide all the ways we've been successful in the past, looking back to the good old days. But if we are to take our text seriously this morning, 
we might want to set our face on the road ahead rather than looking in the rearview mirror, because that is where Jesus tells us that he will be. At a recent staff church council retreat, we were all asked to write down a prayer for Mount Olivet. And the thing that impressed me the most about this collection of prayers compiled by Pastor Beth was how much forward motion they contained. Hiring a new children's director and investing in the baptismal promises we make to kids and youth. Listening to the needs of and serving the western suburbs in new ways. Taking action around racial equity. Engaging in the reconciling in Christ process and becoming a safe space for our LGBTQ siblings. Leading environmentally as we steward and share our building and grounds. We won't travel perfectly or even particularly well with Jesus, but that's never been the point. Because even as he sends and guides us with love, what is being asked of us is hard, and it's okay to admit it. So may we be of good courage as we aim to trust and listen and speak into and move forward in faith. And may we be grateful for it all. Amen. Please stand as we sing. As the words of Jesus continue to linger in you and in us, we confess our faith, the faith of the church, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, we now are at a point in our service where we offer um, our full selves and we share the peace together. And there is always both the giving and the receiving. Uh, what we give of God's mission in the world um, comes back to us, and that is the joy and the surprise and the delight in being generous for all the ways that you invest financially in the vision and mission of Mount Olivet. Thank you. Uh, we have a basket up front for your offering and a box in the back for that as well. And if you are online for all the ways your presence shapes us as a community as well, and we now, in addition to the offering, extend our peace. And you are welcome to uh, write peace in the comments, and we will uh, connect with you there if you're here at church for us to be able to extend and receive that peace to each other. And now may the peace of God be with you all. And also with Let's both share and receive peace from each other. Thank you, Blake, for your offering. We pray together, God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we gather in many places today, we pray together the prayer Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Here we are again at a table where God's invitation is wide. It includes all people wherever you are today, uh, whether life is going well or you're struggling one foot in and one foot out. There's a place for you here always, and it's God's grace. And Jesus is a little demanding today. And um, there's an urgency to what this kingdom of God and for what uh, he is about to do as he makes his way to Jerusalem and will die for the sake of the world. And uh, for us in all the things um, in the places that we're lacking, uh, to refocus on again who does not give up on a broken world and invites us to the table for an abundance to eat, to nourish ourselves, and then to reflect that and bear that in the world. So simply today, come up and open your hands and receive this God's grace that keeps coming. If you're online, this promise is given for you, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Ushers will show you the way gluten-free crackers, wine is red, grape juice is lighter in color, the kneelers are up front for you to pray as well. Please come forward now. The feast is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Um, so we pray together. If you're online, feel free to start typing your prayers in. I'm back from vacation, and I went to look for a pair of scissors at home and opened up my junk drawer. Um, and I think prayer sometimes is like that. You're looking for one thing, and there was a lot of other things in that drawer. Um, and I, I'm just thinking of this week as new gun safety laws passed and the Supreme Court overrules Roe versus Wade and um, people in hospice and babies being born and addiction and mental health and uh, the joys of connecting with people over the summer that we have. It's a mix. Um, it's a drawer full of things. Um, and when we pray together, we open that up to see something. Uh, maybe someone else can see something that we can't see ourselves. And we're real and we do it as community. And um, the power of simply listening and receiving and knowing um, God chooses to come close when we can speak to places that we need it the most. So uh, we do that as a community. Um, it's not orderly and it's beautiful. And we continue to do it that way. So know today, whatever prayer that you pray, that you speak that and it shapes us as a community and God promises to be close. So I'll start us off. And then I look to you first here at church and then online, I will read your prayers as well. So let's pray. Um, God, we need to hear again that, that you haven't given up on this world. And um, as Pastor Christian preached today, not always easy to be a follower when we want to lead the way. Uh, but when we look out at the vast horizon, it's very obscure and the path forward is not clear. Um, but what you say to us is there always is that next step and you promise to be there. And God, um, we pray that we will listen before we will judge, and uh, we will uh, hear that you call us into the world, not simply to receive, but also to give, to give of ourselves, um, to look for you in the face of others, especially people we don't know. Uh, when the need is so great this summer, as inflation is upon us, and the daily budgets uh, don't equal um, what they need to for all the ways uh, that people are opening their hands and their hearts in desperation to have enough. Help us be generous in our lives, God, and as a community. And uh, for this promise and what is ahead um, and that you will be there, please make that so. Now we'll hear our prayers, God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Dela. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Dela's son Adrian um, has COVID, um, and um, as his body um, takes that in and heals and what he needs, and it sounds like his girlfriend uh, doesn't have it yet, in the hopes that she will stay in the clear. Uh, just the mindfulness of uh, what continues to go on the world and honoring where people are at. Um, but we pray especially for Adrian's heal healing today. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Bob. Okay. Uh, God, we pray for Will um, in the midst of mental health struggles, um, for Will's story. Um, Will matters, God, to you and matters to this world and for what he needs right now to be whole and healthy, uh, for people specifically called in the midst of crisis to come and uh, make the ground a little bit more settled. Uh, Bob, for you and Donna, um, who so clearly understand and uh, for your ongoing prayers and your presence uh, with your nephew, God, we pray for all these things. God, in your mercy. Yeah, John. We're in such a divided country right now. The world is the way it's done. We should use gun violence and ask that God will bring us together. Yeah, John's praying for this dissension among us um, in our nation, um, for power 
um, and God, again, um, the sem- to name the truth, um, but also to open ourselves up to hear another side of a story that we don't know um, for what we need right now, um, but not to give up on this, um, to stay and know uh, that your way in the world is uh, for us to witness to speak truth, and it's the love of neighbor, God, where you choose to show up um, for leaders, um, for followers. Um, God, we pray for this world. We pray for this nation. God, in your mercy. Neil, um, when I was sharing the piece with you, you said you're going in for some knee surgery on Tuesday. So we pray for that, that that all goes well, um, that you will be uh, vertical again, uh, time for healing for that. Um, Angela, I saw that you're online for your love and care that comes to Neil always and to know um, that we're with you, God, in your mercy. And Tanya Brandt submitted a prayer request. Um, Her dad's wife's oldest son died of COVID at 51. So a lot of grief um, in Tanya's family um, for the loss of a life so very young, uh, for the ongoing statistics of millions of people dying um, from uh, this virus. And Tanya, especially for your family, to be held in strength and love as you grieve for uh, his life that was held in this this life and now in death, uh, for that promise that holds true, we pray, God, in your mercy. Yeah, Marlis. Okay, so for your neighbor, Sue, who had surgery and now is doing radiation treatment for cancer. So she's got a lot in her basket right now um, for love to come to her. Uh, For you as neighbor, literally um, as neighbor, um, to show up in ways that she needs right now so she can recover and heal. We pray for her healing, God in your mercy. Okay, dear friends online, I'm coming to you. I'm not seeing any prayers online. Um, If you have them, know that we join. uh, We pray um, with you if you're online and um, just are grateful uh, for you as much as everyone here at church. So God, into your hands, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, your grace, and your light. Amen. Uh, Next weekend is uh, the 4th of July. Sunday is the 3rd. One service at 9 o'clock here in church and live streamed. Um, So just so you know, uh, may you have a um, adventurous uh, weekend, wherever that takes you, um, if you are celebrating or traveling or out of town. And uh, we still will have a community meal on July 4th, and we made a call out and many people signed up. We're a little thin for the rest of Mondays in July, so if you have an hour and a half or so or time before that to be able to prep, um, that is one of the ways that we show up in hunger in the suburbs is having that meal each and every week. So invite you to go online and sign up for a shift. Um, that would be great. So wonderful to worship uh, with you. I invite you to stand as we close and we sing. Our sending him is a fun song with a great message. I encourage you all to have a little fun with it. Oh, freedom. Yes, I know. Oh, 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 yes, I know. Oh
I know. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is coming. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is coming. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I know. 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 Receive this blessing. The God of peace, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit to bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.